as I mentioned in a previous video uh, I showed you I was getting a bit of blight in my tomatoes um, never really went away uh, but I, I'm fortunate with it being in my garden uh, I can keep an eye on it every day and a half but obviously once it's there you cannot really get rid of it you just try and cope as best you can so that's what I did and basically all I did was just remove the leaves as soon as I saw any sign of a disease on them and uh, so just remove them take them out of the garden stick them in the garden recycling bin out the front well away from the rest of my tomatoes and well I've done that for as long as I can but uh, basically I decided to just remove the leaves and just bite the bullet as it were and just let them ripen and the ones that don't ripen I just have to throw away um, or see if I can see a recipe for any green tomatoes chutneys or something like that um, but I've, I've harvested quite a lot and there's still quite a few more to come which will arrive uh, before the winter comes the cold weather so I'll just quickly show you so there you go so a few leaves at the bottom but as you can see I've practically stripped the tomatoes of all the leaves and I'll show you those down there as you can see there's only just of oh, the end so I'm ready I might as well get rid of that bit no and there and that one so as you can see there are just a few healthy leaves still but as you can see vast majority of them are ripening still a bunch there that are but there's one there in the center that you can see starting so um and as i say the constellute was gone there's just a few of the ildes plum um which haven't started to write them but i think they should any time now but yeah the only thing that's really got leaves now is my cucumber plant and there's one there ready to pick i mean the cucumber's doing all right so that's that's fine um so yeah it's just a case of uh hopefully um once i've picked these tomatoes i'll take all everything out give it a dust down and then get some gs fluid on everything clean it out ready for the winter stuff that i put in over winter so yeah and the other greenhouse um as i say this i haven't really seen much sign of of blight in this um but we get to the end so that's the same with this just keep an eye on it get rid of any bad leaves uh, and chuck them out get rid of them quick but yeah plenty of t uh, plenty of plums the other greenhouse uh, that's my melon growing even more it's up to about waist chest height um, it is producing flowers uh, there you go it is producing flowers but as I say it's too late I think for it to grow anything uh, as I say uh, this one is I've got to show you this one this is the big banana and that's one and it's probably a, a hand length now it's really ripening uh, and as I say there's another good look one good looking one there 
as well as one at the back and there's another one at the back there so that pepper's doing all right on the end here i'm starting to get quite a few cooked melons forming if i follow this back um, i've lost me lost me thread right there you go there's another one um, and then down there, down there, they really start to form now and uh, well I did see quite a few out there, I don't know if you can see it, there you go. So this is my netted patch as it were, um, the kill is flying by there, lots of uh, Lots of young plants, that's my lettuce, the, around this way, probably a bit better, there you go, a couple of swedes there, the sorrel, all right there, and then there's the beetroot, and well, don't know if you can make it out, uh, but, there is one there, there's a, it's there just behind that leaf, there's one, a decent one, so there, without taking this net off, um, I'll do another video and you can have a proper look at them, they are, they are coming along but there's just a lot of greenery there, leeks doing smashing, um, and to try and save myself a lot of hard work watering all these tubs I've got one of them soaker pipes that you put on a bed I uh, got this from Asda which was uh, a tenner or something like that it was in a sale I think and I've put that up onto a timer and uh, once a day on the morning it just gives out all these pots here a watering it just basically starts at the top and then goes down a, a, a row of pots, then up another row and then back down again. All the way back down and then ends somewhere around about where the carrots are. So yeah, so it does save us a bit of time. I can basically almost forget about the water and just the occasional bit of feeding. Um, but yeah. Yeah, coming along smashing. That's my rhubarb. Starting to sort of die back now, but it's it's done well for its first year in a pot. So hopefully next year I'll try and get some a uh, few sticks of rhubarb off it. The outdoor tomatoes, as you can see, there's plenty ripening on these martinas. Uh, there's some some more San Marzano plums uh, on that one, some tigerellas on there. Uh, that's my constellute ore that I've chopped out and well, uh, go back. So I've got a few spare pots, so I'll see if I can, what I can put in them. Might as well keep them busy. That's my parsnip. There's my Lola Rosso's doing quite happily in that pot. Um, again, some more plums, doing all right. Quite uh, prolific. And another Tigerella, which has got tomatoes ripening. So I'm getting plenty of tomatoes. Um, right. Strawberry wise, uh, no happening really. They're just producing a few new leaves new fresh leaves for the winter so that's all right uh, i'm getting a few peas now um i'll start to produce peas now all over um so yeah pea pods doing fine my sweet corn right I'm going to take this one, this one here down because I've, I've opened it up and I don't know if it's causing the thing to 
get a bit sunburnt or whatever so I'm going to use this as an experiment to see how well they're doing the others which is one there and there's another decent one there I haven't touched so they're still sealed up so there you go snapped it off there you go and we'll see what it's like put the camera on a stand because I think I'll need both hands for this uh, well this is my straight cone I can see it's about a hand in length uh, the cup itself is only about up to the palm about there so uh, I did saw these late so I'm not expecting anything fantastic from these so see what we get uh, so exciting bet you're all waiting with bated breath uh, it's like that game pass the parcel Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Well, well, there's a few corn there. Not bad, I think, for my first attempt. It's a weird little thing. <laughs> so, yeah, there's the hairs. I mean, as I say, I, I saw these late, so they didn't have much chance to get very big. Uh, at best, they're only about waist high, the total plant, so not bad, not bad. Um, do the test. Uh, can't really tell if... I think that's a bit milky, so... I'll let the bairn have it, because the bairn likes sweet corn, so see if uh, tell you what she thinks of this one. But yeah, obviously did all right around there. Uh, maybe I need to leave them a bit longer, so I will. Um, so yeah, my first sweet corn. Not bad. Not bad, gives us hope. I think I'll give them another try next year, but get them sown earlier. Give them a fighting chance. There you go. It's one of my Brussels sprouts. They look a bit dark on the outside, but that's just the outside leaves. As you go further up, uh, as you can see, they look better. Fresher, greener. Uh, and as you can see there, put that on there. Same again, Brussels sprouts all the way up. Uh, that's the one that's been nobbled. That Brussels sprout there, that's the one that's been heavily attacked. So I'm leaving that as it is. And I'm hoping this one, with all the, with all the new ones, which are not being attacked. I'm hoping they get left alone and there's a one there. Uh, you can see them all there. All the way up. Um, all the new ones. So, yeah. There's plenty on them too. So, hopefully, that'll be alright. Spring onions, uh, they are starting to, to go. Uh, that white one right in the centre, that's really starting to bulb up now, but they all are. So that's that. Uh, there me spring onions, doing all right, getting a little bit fatter. Some lettuce in a pot. And some more lettuce in a pot. But with a soaker hose, I don't have to. I just put it on in the morning, give them a water, and that's it. It, the timer does it all for us. 
so I can concentrate more on me on me flowers in the pots. Nice petunia there. Um, thing is, these the flowers are starting there. It's a nice one. Uh, cosmos. Um, but they're all starting to come to the end. And the uh, Rudbeckia are looking absolutely gorgeous. And the Salvia and the cornflowers are hanging on. Um, but yeah, the Rudbeckias are doing lovely. Right. Okay, so what you're seeing there, which is that there and that there, a root storm. And I planted these about two, one, two inches, maybe even more, maybe about three inches with all the soil. And in a matter of, I think it's two or three days, there's, the, there's one of the shoots coming. And these white things here are the roots. So already they start to shoot up, try and recover the roots. So, and it's not just one, I'm thinking, yeah, sorry if it's a bit dark here, but there, there's another shoot coming. Uh, and very gently yeah there's one two roots there so these are flying away we are getting some really nice warm weather um, so the most I think they're loving it here um, so I'll keep you updated with them uh, right the greenhouses are there for the time being and until I get them cleaned out with some jeers. I got me strawberry uh, potatoes over there out the way so hopefully reduce chances of any possible blight moving on to them there. As I say it's only three pots I'm only trying them out if they don't work I'm not going to be heartbroken, but I thought I'd give it a try. I had a quick comment from Aaron saying that uh, basically he hopes I get a good chance of growing these potatoes. Um, he said normally if they've grown potatoes and tomatoes on the allotment by this time of the year, a lot of them have had blight of one form or another and to grow autumn uh, autumn planting potatoes is usually uh, well basically no chance in hell of getting them without them getting blight really quickly so I've had a little bit of blight on my tomatoes as you see I keep on top of it so hopefully it'll uh, will not get infected or if they do I'll see if I can keep on top of it you know so Okay, that's it from Samoa Emi Pot Garden.